May Maya Tabalanza Milieti was born on May the 1st, 1981 in the Philippines to parents Pablito and Noemi Tabalanza and was the fifth of six children. In her younger years, Maya excelled academically and was a high achiever at school. In March of 1995, Maya and her family immigrated to Honolulu, Hawaii, where she attended Radford High School. She participated in various extracurricular activities such as drama club and dance classes. Following graduation with honours at 17 years old, Maya gained employment at a McDonald's fast food restaurant, during which time she met her future husband, Larry Milietti. The pair began dating and wed two years later when Maya was 19 years old. Maya attended the University of Hawaii to study international studies, while Larry went for naval training in Virginia, following which the pair moved to Southern California where Maya continued her studies in San Diego, graduating with honours. Following this, Maya gained employment as a civilian contract specialist with the US Navy at Naval Base San Diego. She was a very dedicated, driven and hardworking employee. After becoming more financially stable, Maya and Larry decided to start their family, and in 2010, they welcomed their first child, a daughter, Lara. She was followed by another girl, Milani, and a boy, Lazarus, in 2016. Maya was a devoted mother and adored her children, making it her goal in life to give them the best possible upbringing she could. Maya loved hiking, dirt biking, off-roading, camping and travelling around the world with her three children, and was always there to support them at school events. Her family said that Maya would move mountains for them. She cared very much for people in general and was very charitable, always willing to help anyone in need. Every time she and her family returned to visit the Philippines, they would often give school supplies to children in rural communities. Maya was also a very talented musician and had taught herself how to play the guitar and piano. By January of 2021, Maya was 39 years old and living with her husband and three children on the 2400 block of Paseo Los Gatos in Chula Vista, California. Since late 2020, Maya and Larry had been having relationship problems after Larry became aware of an alleged affair. He became somewhat controlling and paranoid following this, and struggled to accept his wife's actions of initiating a separation and divorce in December of 2020. Larry would show up unannounced at Maya's workplace in order to make sure she was where she told him she was. He was keeping tabs on her at all hours of the day. According to one of Maya's friends, Larry had been physically abusive towards her, having once strangled her until she passed out. Because of this incident, she was understandably fearful for her children's welfare as well as her own. Another friend offered Maya a safe house in case she needed it. She told friends she was extremely unhappy and wanted to break away from Larry so that she and her children would be safe. The situation in the Milietti household continued to escalate as the days passed, and on January 7th, Maya mysteriously vanished from her own home, never to be seen or heard from again. Before delving into today's case, we would like to thank today's sponsor, June's Journey. June's Journey is an intriguing vintage murder mystery game set in the 1920s, available for free download. It challenges players to uncover hidden objects and solve captivating puzzles with breathtaking antique environments. As the game unfolds, players embark on a quest for truth and justice as they learn that the protagonist, June Parker, tragically lost her sister to murder. With each progression and enthralling story development, myriad secrets are unveiled, adding depth to the immersive gameplay experience. One of the features we love about the game is the ability to customise your own mansion space and garden island, affording players the opportunity to remodel and fix it according to their own unique preferences. This aspect adds a nice personal touch, infusing your game with a distinctive flair that reflects your individual taste and style. 
After a busy day at work, our team enjoy unwinding by playing June's Journey. The game's breathtaking artwork captivates the imagination, and coupled with the enchanting and enigmatic stories, June's Journey is an ideal escape for any amateur detective or true crime enthusiast alike. The June's Journey app is available to download on Android and iOS mobile devices, as well as on PC through Facebook games. To download June's Journey today, scan the QR code on screen or click the link down in the description below. Thank you so much to June's Journey for sponsoring today's video. CCTV footage on the street captured Maya arriving home at around 5pm that evening, following a consultation with a divorce attorney earlier that same day. However, she is never seen leaving the residence. The following day on January 8th, at approximately 6.45am, a black SUV, believed to have been driven by Larry, was seen leaving the home, returning approximately 12 hours later at around 6pm. Where Larry was, or what he was doing, was a mystery. Maya's family became concerned as they hadn't heard anything from her since the previous day, which was very unusual. She was close to her siblings in particular, and wasn't answering any messages or calls, which was a cause for concern. Maya's extended family had been planning a party for her eldest daughter's birthday on January 10th to Big Bear Lake, but Maya had stopped responding to their messages about the plans. Her brother visited the Chula Vista residence to check up on his sister when he met Larry, who told him that his wife had locked herself in a room since the previous night following an argument. Larry claimed to have taken his son to Solona Beach that day, but when he returned, his wife was still upstairs, locked away in the bedroom. Maya's family returned the following day on the 9th, where Larry told them the same thing, following which her family insisted he grant them access to the room, which he did, only for her family to find it empty, with no trace of Maya. Larry claimed she, quote, probably went hiking. Maya's car was still sitting on the driveway, though, and her credit card and driver's license were missing. Following this, at around midnight, Maya's elder sister, Mary Chris, filed a missing persons report to authorities. She voiced deep concerns for her sister's welfare, especially given the circumstances surrounding her disappearance. According to investigators, Maya's final contact with her loved ones before she vanished was at 8.15pm on January 7th, with the phone completely disconnecting from any cell networks at 1.25am on January 8th. Cell analysis tracked the phone's final whereabouts, and it was in the Chula Vista area where she lived. The search was conducted by police and volunteers, who spent many weeks and months scouring the area, searching wooded areas, creeks and waterways. This included the Mount San Miguel State Park, Glam's Sand Dunes, Lower Ote Lake, National City and an abandoned golf course in Chula Vista, but all to no avail. Meanwhile, on January 23rd, police obtained a search warrant, the first of 67 in total, and scoured the Milietti residence from top to bottom in an effort to find any indication as to what had happened to Maya. They found Larry to be in possession of 16 firearms, including two which were in his possession illegally. Four weapons he possessed licenses for were not found in the home, and when questioned about them, Larry claimed to have lent them to a friend, then their uncle. In May 2021, Larry was given a gun violence restraining order and had to surrender more weapons to authorities. This was also due to the fact photos had been found of Milietti's son surrounded by several rifles and allegations arose of all three children knowing the passcode to his gun cabinet. The children were not safe, therefore the order was served to Larry for their own protection. Other agencies joined the investigation at this time, including the FBI and Naval Criminal Investigative Service, who assisted in impounding the two family vehicles for examination. Skeletal remains were found in Orange County shortly afterwards, however the remains turned out to be animal bones. Maya's family, heartbroken by her disappearance, spoke to the media numerous times to appeal to the public for any information. 
They also passed out flyers and hung posters across the area in order to raise awareness of Maya's disappearance. Her daughter's birthday came and went, and nothing in the world would have stopped her from being there unless something had happened to her. One crucial piece of evidence then came to light when CCTV footage from a neighbour captured what appeared to be eight gunshots sounding from the Miglietti residence at approximately 9.57pm on January 7th. The audio recording of this was released to the public, in which dogs can be heard barking in the background. However, the actual footage was not released, likely due to maintain the integrity of the investigation and protect the identity of the neighbour who submitted the footage. Further commotion was captured in the vicinity around half an hour later at 10.34pm. Around that time, neighbours' CCTV spotted Larry playing with his children in the backyard, which was quite strange considering how late it was, not to mention the cold temperatures that night. It should be noted that Maya's husband, Larry, did not partake in any of the searches for his missing wife, and in the weeks and months following her disappearance, refused point-blank for any of Maya's family to visit their three children. He severed all contact with her family. Police didn't draw any particular conclusion to begin with. It was entirely plausible that Maya, having fought with her husband, left the house of her own free will to calm down and get her head together before returning. However, there was no evidence to suggest that this was the case and nobody had captured her leaving the property on CCTV. Larry became a person of interest in this case very quickly and it didn't take long for him to hire a lawyer and stop cooperating with police. During their inquiries, police questioned several of Maya's relatives, including her sister, who told them that the weekend prior to her disappearance, she, her husband, Maya and Larry went on a camping trip together, during which time, according to her, Maya and Larry were bickering and fighting most of the time. Larry allegedly asked another member of the family to get the other guy, meaning the man that Maya had been having an affair with. It was alleged that Larry was possibly looking into getting a hitman to kill her. Maya's family even allegedly told the police that the 39-year-old chillingly told them that if anything were to happen to her, her husband would be behind it. On July 22nd, over six months after Maya disappeared, Larry was officially named a person of interest. The police affidavit stated that it was of their professional opinion that 41-year-old Larry had murdered his wife on the night of January 7th, going into January 8th and then disposed of her body. In police interviews, Larry told authorities the same story that he had told Maya's family that he and Maya had fought on the night of January 7th and then she had stormed off into her bedroom, locked the door and did not come out. On the 8th, he claimed that he went out to the beach, notably a completely different one to which he first claimed, but that when he returned, he heard his wife walking about upstairs. When looking into his timeline, however, it appeared that nobody knew where he was during the 6th, 7th or 8th of January, as he never showed up to work, not to mention that on the 8th his phone had been turned off for approximately 11 hours, which was deemed highly suspicious. CCTV showed Larry reversing his car up the driveway towards the garage out of sight, but whether he loaded anything to or from his vehicle is unclear. Whilst investigating the home, police took Larry's phone, which then revealed all of the texts sent between him and Maya. However, they had all been erased. When asked about this, Larry claimed he deleted them to free up storage space on his phone, which police deemed very highly unlikely given messages are mostly merely kilobytes. Some rather disturbing browsing history also came to light during this time, which sent chills down investigators' spines. He searched for plants and drugs to consume, which would result in unconsciousness, as well as various searches regarding his wife not being interested in him anymore. But even more disturbingly, Larry's search history revealed that he often visited spellcasting websites. Between September 2020 and January 2021, 
It was discovered that Larry bought these so-called magic spells almost on a daily basis, casting them all towards his wife, Maya. He would ask, quote, please punish me and incapacitate her enough so she can't leave the house. Can you hex to have her hurt enough that she will have to depend on me and need my help? She's only nice to me when she needs me or sick. Thanks again. Maybe an accident or broken bone. Make her realise that we are meant to be with each other. Make her miserable without me. Make her want to sleep on the same bed for all eternity. Even more disturbingly, Larry had what appeared to be a black magic shrine dedicated to his wife, which was smeared with his own blood. Suspicion arose once again when Larry appeared to stop buying these hexes when Maya disappeared. On the 9th of January, he asked these spellcasters to cease casting spells on her. In the legal battle for custody of Maya's three children, which was filed by Maya's parents, Larry told authorities that he considers Maya to be alive, as she had voluntarily left the home at least twice in 2020 without telling anyone. He also stated that his wife had been acting erratically and had been frequently locking herself inside the bedroom, not allowing herself to see her children. He was convinced that Maya's family were slandering him, accusing him of killing her in order to destroy and defame him. During the legal proceedings, it appeared that Larry withdrew a substantial amount of money from his bank account, leading many to believe that he possibly intended to disappear himself in order to avoid prosecution. On the 19th of October 2021, Larry Milietti was arrested for the murder of his wife, Maya, and his children were placed in the legal custody of his parents. He was charged with murder and illegal possession of an assault rifle and pleaded not guilty. During this time, a court order was placed in which Larry was not allowed contact with his children in order to prevent further trauma. He broke his restraining order, as he had spoken to them during calls placed to his parents. He placed hundreds of calls, speaking to his children at length, who read him articles about the upcoming trial. When the injunction was placed, Larry was only allowed contact with his attorney, though was later allowed written communication with his children. Maya's sister submitted the motion for custody of the children, as did her parents, but were refused as not to uproot them from their hometown. They did get extended visitation rights, but continue to look for full custody of the children who remain in their paternal grandparents' care. Miglietti was refused bond and bail, as he continued to pose a threat to the male individual who Maya had been seeing. An appeal was launched by Larry's attorney in June of 2022, citing that he was not competent to stand trial, but following psychiatric evaluation, he was found to be competent to stand trial in regards to the murder of Maya Miglietti. Preliminary hearings in January 2023 concluded that Larry would stand trial for first-degree murder and illegal possession of a firearm. The trial is scheduled to commence on January the 16th, 2024, though it has already been pushed back several times due to financial issues on the defence and the fact that Larry's attorney asked the judge to stop representing him in October 2023. Whether the trial goes ahead as planned, only time will tell. Three years on and Maya Miglietti has never been found. A number of vigils have been held since she vanished, with private searches continuing to this day with the help of donations through a GoFundMe campaign. Her loved ones are desperate to bring her home. When she disappeared, Maya Tabalanza Miglietti was 39 years old. She is described as being Asian, specifically Filipina, with brown hair and brown eyes, standing at 5 feet 2 inches tall and weighing approximately 105 pounds. Due to the circumstances involved, foul play is suspected in this case. If Maya is alive, she would be 42 years old. 
Anyone with any information regarding the disappearance of Maya Miglietti are urged to contact San Diego County Crime Stoppers at 888 580 or the Chula Vista Police Department at 619-691-5139.